In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostrae. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, this is John the Son of Thunder, and I'm here with Ryan the Retrograde. And today we're going to talk about the New American Bible. Now, I have posted a few videos about, you know, my, my interesting findings of the New American Bible and how, you know, the footnotes are rather modernist. And so Ryan has a little bit more insight. He's going to expand on that a little bit. Yeah, John, I watched one of your videos and I commented on that before. And uh, I'm glad you're pointing us out. I don't know who, who else has has talked about the New American Bible. I think it came up in an episode of TNT that they may have mentioned, yes. Yes. And uh, that got me thinking, and that led me to your uh, YouTube, which you put on there. And the context of this is modernism, and the context more specifically is biblical criticism and the so-called historical critical method, okay? So... I believe it was Taylor Marshall, Timothy Gordon, they pointed out, the actual translation of the New American Bible is not all that bad. It's the translation, more or less, that's approved for use at Mass. And uh, they made an attempt with a bunch of biblical scholars to come up with a good translation. It's both faithful to the original language as well as using uh, modern, you know, discovered uh, manuscripts, whatever. Uh, and, but also trying to be faithful to the tradition of the church. For instance, you know that if you read the New American Bible that you'll get off the shelf, like is behind us here, I think that the translation that they use, for instance, for the, uh, the Annunciation, is um, I don't believe it uses the word Hail Mary, full of grace. But the bishops corrected that when they did the translation for the Mass, and so at Mass, they actually used the Catholic uh, translation uh, for that purposes, for the Mass. So be that as it may, the, the translation, the words themselves are not terrible. The problem comes in, as you have pointed out and others have pointed out, about the footnotes that are in the New American Bible. And those footnotes are saturated with modernism. Those footnotes try to explain away nearly every miracle that appears in the Old and the New Testaments. And they try to, whenever possible, they try to find the Catholic interpretation and say, oh, that's not what Christ is talking about. Um, and that's not the way we ought to interpret it because, you know, whatever reasons they might give. So, uh, now how do I know, how do we know, well, this is, this is real Catholicism or this is modernism or whatever? Well, that's where the magisterium comes in, okay? And the magisterium has give, given us criteria to interpret the Bible. And what is that? Well, number one, you have the Council of Trent. And then going further on, you have commentaries from the, actually preceding that, you have commentaries from the Fathers. Um, subsequent to Trent, you have, you get to a point where modernism became a problem in the late 1800s, early 1900s and you have the establishing of the Pontifical Biblical Commission. Now, all that, all the, everything that the Pontifical Biblical Commission has said about the Bible in any kind of authority is on the internet, all right? And I can send you, and you can post it in, in, a, uh, in the description of this yes. video, yep. all these decrees of the Pontifical Biblical Commission. They're all in PDF. And what do they say? Well, they say, the question is asked, well, how are we supposed to interpret Genesis? Is this literal or figurative? Well, the Pontifical Biblical Commission says you have to interpret it literally because that's what all the fathers did. Well, what about the authorship of the Pentateuch? Uh, who was the author? You know, were there all these sources? The Pontifical Biblical Commission under it was either Pius IX or St. Pius X said Moses is the author of the Pentateuch, like everybody has always believed. Now, all that stuff, the Pontifical Biblical Commission, when these things were authored, had actual magisterial authority. It was only until like the 60s, Paul VI, that he disestablished the Pontifical Biblical Commission and just made it some kind of advisory body. 
But so they've answered the Pontifical Biblical Commission, part of the magisterium of the church, has decreed about the authorship of Moses, uh, about the book of Isaiah, about the Gospels, um, about the book of the Apocalypse. The author of the Hebrew book to the Hebrews is St. Paul. As the Byzantines teach during the Divine Liturgy, they say, uh, a reading from the from the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews, okay? And if it's in the liturgy, it's true. That's kind of the definition of what the liturgy yeah, is, all right? Have a fake liturgy. <laughs> you don't have fake things in the liturgy. Otherwise, the church is canonized air. Okay, so with that in mind, the church has given us, with its magisterium, it's told us about many of these questions, which are now many of these, yes, many of these questions which have been answered differently by modernist scripture scholars, but were answered in a different way by the magisterium of the church. And we should believe what the magisterium teaches, and the magisterium has taught these specific things. In the New American Bible, the problem with it is that it deviates from the consistent interpretation of the Catholic Church. In, in a video that you, um, again, a video that you posted before about the New American Bible, I made reference to my friend Ben Douglas's series of articles. I'll post that below. Yes, which is called The New American Bible Is It Safe for Catholics? <laughs> and yes, and Ben Douglas is very thorough. He goes through like every footnote nearly. I think oh, it's geez. in the book of Genesis. It might be the entire <laughs> Pentateuch with the Gospels in the New Testament. And he goes everywhere and finds every point where it deviates from Catholic teaching. And he points out what the true teaching is and what the problem with the footnotes in the New American Bible are. So after you read that, you'll be like, I need to burn this Bible. <laughs> it's filled with heresy. Well, you have a field day with Acts, right? <laughs> uh, I'm sure, yes. I'm sure that, yeah. Everything's symbolic. The tongues yeah. of fire were symbolic. And yeah. That's what, I, that's what I referenced in a previous video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So are you saying that the New American Bible should, uh, that everyone should get rid of their New American Bible and buy a Dewey Reams version, even if they're a cheapskate like me? <laughs> well, remember, the Dewey Reams is free online. Okay. okay. So you can read it for free online. And on YouTube, I believe somebody has read the entire Dewey Reams. And there you, you can just listen to it. Um, so you can consider that, yes, on YouTube or... You, you're listening to it? We'll, we'll look at it. IP, IPA that has Dewey Reams on it, and you can read it there. Plus, also on Post YouTube, link. yes, also, sorry, also on the internet, you can find the Haydock commentary of the Dewey Reams Bible, which was published in that large, it's in a large red volume, two volumes actually, maybe even three, and it is a terrific commentary both on the old and the new, and it was authored by Father Haydock, who was an English priest over a hundred years ago, and he makes extensive use of the fathers and of the medieval commentators. So that's free online. Look up uh, Google Haydock commentary on the Dewey Reams Bible, and you'll find in line the text with all the notes, and the notes are almost as much as the text itself. It's terrific. And in that, you will get the traditional interpretation of the Bible. Traditional meaning um, real? Yes, really Catholic. By the way, I wanted to point out one thing before, we, I, before you, you continue, and that it's something that Father Ripperger has mentioned a couple times, namely that the Catholic Church has canonized one version of the Bible that happened at the Council of Trent, and that is the Vulgate. The Vulgate in the Latin is the Bible that the church has guaranteed to be absolutely free from error. The church has guaranteed the authenticity and the Catholicity of the Vulgate Bible. And so the Dewey Reams is the most faithful English translation. It's very literal from the Latin to the English. And so that combined with Catholic commentaries you will not go wrong, and you'll be reading with the mind of the church the inspired, inerrant Word of God. And uh, one last point I would like to make. I talked to my friend Aaron earlier this morning 
I had sent him a, a YouTube by Robert Sujanis, who I think is probably one of the best uh, expositors on the Bible from a Catholic perspective. And he has a, he doesn't have his own YouTube channel right now. He's on Holy Faith, I believe is the name of the YouTube. He does have a Facebook and he live streams things. And Robert Sujanis is terrific when you want to understand when there's controversies about the Bible, how should we interpret Genesis. Uh, he's written very, um, very well researched and very thick books uh, about the Bible. And so anyone who's more interested in learning about using, learning about how the church understands the Bible and um, learning how to use the Bible more effectively in your spirituality and in apologetics, consult, watch some of uh, Robert Sujanis' work. Uh, much of it is on YouTube, and uh, as I said, he's doing some live streams on Facebook and YouTube now on Holy Faith, and I highly recommend him. All right, well, thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. All the links are going to be in the description.